What's up everybody, The Poets here and I hope you're doing well and staying safe. Today we're going to be doing a little bit more quarantine content and it's going to be involving this. This is the EKWB D5 RGB pump and I already have one of these inside of Deep Blue and it's helping to make sure that my system is nice and cool, great flow rate, but since I am adding a second system inside of Deep Blue, this 8700K actually, there's going to be some more restrictions. So I want to make sure that the flow rate is not restricted too much. So adding a second pump is going to help with that. Plus, because I will have two systems in there, I want some redundancy. So if one system goes down, I still have another pump that's making sure the flow is going throughout the whole system. So today we're going to be checking to make sure that this works properly. And you always want to make sure your pump works before you take the time of disassembling your system, draining it, putting in the pump, and just to find out it doesn't turn on or it has leaks, all right? So we're gonna avoid that rookie mistake and there are some tools you're gonna need. First, some uh, soft tubing. We're gonna test it just with some soft tubing. You don't need hard tubing. Don't make it hard on yourself. Uh, just a little funnel so you can pour some distilled water in there. Uh, of course, the fittings. These are just some EKWB soft tubings, uh, soft tubing fittings right here. A uh, nice little cutter. All right, so this cutter is kind of nice because it allows me to cut not only soft tubing, but hard tubing as well. So two for one. Of course, you're gonna need a power supply to power the pump, and you're gonna need this to kind of basically trick the power supply in thinking that it is plugged into a motherboard. And it just goes in just like that. So let's go to town and open this up. So of course you have the manual, some of the parts you'll need. This is for anti-vibration to reduce the sound of the pump. And of course then we have the pump itself. So I like this pump a lot. It, it has uh, some great quality cables right here. It looks great in terms of just the EKWB logo. You can take the logo out if you don't wanna you know, sport the logo and say, hey, I'm an EKWB fan. Uh, but EKWB, hey, YouTube video, logo, send me some free stuff. So I like the look of this pump a lot. It does have mounting brackets on the rear, so you can actually attach uh, something so it can stand upright or attach it to a fan mount or radiator. So it's actually very versatile. Here is the uh, 12 volt RGB. Here is the uh, Molex co connector. So we're gonna plug this into the power supply. And then this is the PW PWM cable so that you can plug this into the motherboard. Uh, to adjust the pump speed. Currently, the one that I have in deep blue, I just leave it at 100% speed. It's quiet as can be, so I absolutely love it. And then, of course, the sticker here, you pull that off after you've successfully installed this in the system, and it's on both sides. You'll see two holes up front. There's an in and an out, and of course, the fill port up top. So we're gonna be using all three right now, and let's get started. So basically, with these, we just wanna screw these in nice and easily, and not too tight with your hands because they will tend to just kind of tear up your skin. All right, so there's kind of a trick to this. One, you can either use some rubber gloves or use a tool like this. And just nice and easily, just make it nice and taut, not too hard uh, because you're basically screwing metal into plastic, all right? So just nice and, nice and stiff. And after that, we're gonna pick our tube and we're just gonna do a loop going from in and out. All right, something simple. So you just kind of wiggle this around until it gets in there, nice and solid. Don't forget to put on the bracket to screw that down. And then since we're doing it as a closed loop here, I have to put the other bracket in beforehand. And then just shove this one on here too. And then screw that in. So nice closed loop. It's not pretty, but it's gonna do the job. I wanna see if I can set this up a little easier. That works. All right, next, get your funnel. Make sure you have the right size. Too big. Yeah, too big. Perfect, just right. So this, it's just some regular old distilled water, all right? So I'm just gonna pour this in here. making sure there's no leaks. I'm just gonna fill this up to a visible level. There we go. 
And so I'm actually going to put this top on, plug this into the power supply. There's a little switch in the back of the power supply. So I'm just gonna turn that on. Oh, power supply is not plugged in. Damn it. I did a, I did a Kyle. Ugh. All right, power supply is plugged in. Flip the switch. It's gonna turn on and boom, there we go. So now I'm going to kind of open this up a little bit to allow some of the air to come out. That's just my preference. Not everybody actually closes the top. I have seen fluid kind of spit out at the top. So just kind of learn from experience. So I'm gonna let this run for really about a half hour uh, just to make sure that there are no leaks because water, if there is a leak, water will find a way eventually, but typically within a half hour, if there's no leak, then you're fine. And I don't know if you can tell how quiet this is. This is at 100% speed because it's just attached to the Molex and therefore uh, there's no PWM plugged into the motherboard. So maybe if I get my mic right up next to it, And you get to see my nice shiny face even better. So it's really quiet. So that's why I leave it at 100% speed because it does really affect the temperatures. When you have a great flow rate going over your you know, CPU and GPU blocks, it does lower the temperatures up to a certain point of flow rate. So I'm not gonna get into the science of that, but once you hit that certain point, it doesn't matter how fast the water is going, you're not gonna really get better temperatures at all. So this is looking good. You then have the option of adding different colors to it. So. What I will be using is the Eco Cryofuel Navy Blue. That's what I currently have in Deep Blue. Uh, you can kind of create your own formula, you know, determine exactly how dark or how transparent you want this to be. It is a concentrate, so it's very, very powerful. A little goes a long way. And in the past, I have used this. This is the Eco Cryofuel, the Azure Blue. Uh, it's a really cool color, but it is kind of a pastel, so it is a pain in the butt to clean. Uh, but if you go in knowing that, you're gonna have a great looking system with this color as well. So I think eventually I may go back to this color and that's just because I like kicking myself in the butt, you know, but it looks great. So I've been really happy with the EKWB products. Uh, this is my second D5 pump from them. I have a couple of radiators, a water block for an 8700K for a Threadripper 3970X, as well as a, a GPU block, the Vega 64. They've all been flawless, and uh, with all these fittings that I've gotten from them, no leaks whatsoever. So uh, if it's not broken, you know, uh, don't mess with it. Uh, so that's why I keep going with EKWB products. And this is the Optimus water block, if you haven't seen my previous uh, YouTube video. Uh, so this is going on the Threadripper 3970X. So this has 225 fins on there. So it's uh, kind of insane, uh, the, the craftsmanship that Optimus has done with this water block. So, uh, so basically this is going to gonna go throughout the whole loop, eventually go into the in and out of this, go into radiators. So ideally, this is going to improve the temperatures of the Threadripper 3970X. Um, noticeably, I'll put it that way. I don't know if it's gonna be a large margin, but that's why I'm gonna be doing some testing to find that out. So I'm gonna call this a success right now. It doesn't look like this pump has any issues whatsoever, so I'm gonna go ahead and drain it. And uh, basically all I'm gonna do is just open the top and dump it in the sink. Um, it's very simple. When you are building your own custom water-cooled PC, you have to make sure that you have a drain port. That is a common mistake that a lot of new people into water cooling uh, get into, is like they're excited, they build their loop, uh, they can easily fill it because most pumps have some type of fill port, but you actually have to plan out your drain port. So make sure you do that. So with Deep Blue, all I have to do is attach one of these tubes to the drain port and then just turn this little dial thing and the system starts to drain out. Uh, when it gets to a certain point where it stops, then I just open up the top valve of the fill port and that allows air to come in the system and then a lot of the other fluid just starts to come out as well. So it's a fairly simple process. Maybe I'll do a video on that as well. 
Uh, but yes, when you're building your first water cooling system, make sure you have a drain port installed and it should be the lowest point of the entire system. Let gravity do the work for you. So if you found this content very informative, feel free to hit that like button. And if you wanna see more content like this in the future, just go ahead and subscribe. If you have any questions whatsoever on water cooling on this D5 pump or you know Deep Blue or anything relating to just kind of cooling your PC, go ahead and ask some questions in the comment section. I love talking to everybody in the comments section and uh, really getting to know all of you as well. So feel free to also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm on TikTok as well. So uh, this is the age of social media. So reach out to me any way, shape or form you want and we will have some great conversations on water cooling. So I will talk to you guys soon in the next one and stay safe out there. Peace.